our uh, full body scan for cancer uh, screening is 22 minutes and priced at $499. Can you talk a little bit about how AI is integrated into MRI? Like where, where does AI and MRI imaging really come together? Yeah, so in a number of ways. Uh, we at Ezra have three AIs that we use at the, uh, in the kind of every step of the screening process. So the biggest cost with a, an MRI is obviously the scanner itself. And so MRIs are incredible imaging modalities because they allow you to create images of the body with high sensitivity and specificity without exposure to radiation, right? So you can use it as a screening exam done every year for the entirety of one's life without any concern for harmful radiation. The challenge with MRI is that it uses magnetic resonance of the protons in the water in the body to create internal images of the body. The reason that's a challenge is because magnetic resonance is inherently a very noisy environment. And so the way you do high-quality scans is by doing every single sequence multiple times in order to average out the noise. Because signal will always be the same, noise will be random. By doing the scan multiple times, you're able to average out the noise and create a crisper image. Got it. Now, the problem with doing the sequence multiple times is that it will add to scan time, which will add to cost. And so what we've created at Ezra, the first AI that we kind of deploy is called Ezra Flash, and it enables us to acquire MRI images faster and then denoise them and enhance their quality using our AI so that radiologists can actually um, look at the images and um, identify kind of small things that they might not be able to identify in a, like a super noisy image. And so this AI allows us to create MRI scanning protocols that are much faster and then enhance their quality using uh, Ezra Flash AI, which is kind of FDA cleared and in production. Once the uh, scan has been done, it then needs to be uh, analyzed by radiologists. And we're actually the first company to have received an FDA clearance from AI that assists radiologists when they read prostate MRI scans. And so the AI is, is designed to assist radiologists with measurements, annotations, segmentations, in order to make their job easier. Kind of a a large part of what a radiologist does is just grunt work of measuring things and providing annotations and so on. We think that that will ultimately be fully automated by AI across all organs. We have an FDA cleared AI for prostate there, and we'll be expanding it to other uh, organs. And then the third way in which we use AI is, I don't know if you've ever seen a radiology report, but they're like super technical. They use a lot of jargon. It's kind of unclear what these things mean and what you should do about them. We've created an AI called Ezra Reporter that takes the radiology reports and converts them into plain English uh, so that anyone can understand what every single finding means. And so by deploying AI at every step of the screening process, it's allowed us to condense the cost, and then we pass those cost savings to consumers. Got it. Wonderful. So it's a better, cleaner, faster picture, right? followed up by really highlighting, and it sounds like you started with prostate, but you have this intention of going to other organs too, with kind of pointing the radiologist to say, look, here's something of interest. This is the measurement across, you know, the different aspects of the image its size. So all of the standard workflow they would go through for that organ, the MRI. And then I assume it's like a summarization or note note that's generated automatically because I agree radiology reports are actually very hard to consume. Correct. It's not as much as a summarization as it is a translation. You know, it's kind of taking every single thing that is noted by the radiologist in the radiology report and explaining in plain English what that means. Got it. And so um, are all three elements then FDA cleared? Or does each, all three of them need to go through the same process? Do they go through together or do you... No. Do you without regulatory approval, right? And obviously you have to go and validate each step of the way, which I know is super important in AI, right? Is how accurate is it and, and does it work, yes or no? How, how do you approach that? Yeah, so the first two are medical devices, um, uh, class two medical devices cleared by the FDA. The third one, the kind of report translation um, uh, AI is actually not a medical device. It's purely just like a consumer AI that is able to... Uh, convert radiology terms into plain English, and that's like not classified as a medical device. Now, for the first two, they are medical devices, Ezra Flash and Ezra Assist, and therefore we need to go through a kind of a very rigorous process to 
obtain five ten k clearance with the FDA. And basically, the the kind of typical journey is that we will have an internal AI team that runs uh, experiments on our training data just to uh, train AIs to achieve our kind of objective. For Ezra Flash, for example, it's just making, uh, enabling us to enhance the quality of MRI images. We'll run a number of models. It'll take it'll generally take us six to nine months to get to the uh, intended result, which is like we have a new scanning protocol that's faster, that yields lower quality images, and then we enhance the quality of those images. Once we've built the model and we internally feel we're happy with, we then have a separate regulatory team that's still kind of part of Ezra team, but it's uh, completely separate from AI team. And that regular team, regulatory team runs a number of um, internal verification and validation um, uh, uh, steps in order to ensure that the AI model does what we want it to do. For Ezra Flash then, sorry, just to... Yeah, um, go ahead. When you're looking at quality, are there very standard metrics that the FDA has already established? So in yes. other words, is there precedent or is this de novo? Like, how are you approaching the, you know, the comparator here? Yeah, so there are many predicates that we use. Predicate is kind of the, the term that the FDA uses for a prior device that was cleared in a similar domain. The mm -hmm. nice, we now have three FDA clearances and therefore we can use ourselves as the predicate. And so that's kind of a nice thing where we're just like submitting some new work that's based on prior work and we're using our own product as a predicate. There are metrics that you need to use in order to determine um, the quality of the AI. For the, for the uh, image enhancement AI, there are three metrics that we use, signal to noise ratio, contrast to noise ratio, and a qualitative assessment by the radiologist measured on a Likert scale. And those three metrics together need to show improvement um, across each metric, across the images that we plan to use the AI for. And in this case, though, it's not organ specific. This is for the overall performance of the M imaging equipment itself, right? And the way that it reads. So just a clarification there, it actually is, it's not organ specific, but it's region specific. And so we had to go and get clearance initially for neuro, and then we had to go and get clearance for body. And within your own body, we had to go and show that we had enough kind of data to show that um, in a typical population, even with people for, who have lesions and pathologies in the scans, we can see those in these kind of AI-enhanced uh, MRI images. Got it. And what, what should people be, like, why is it concerning, like, versus the, the beginning? Like, what was the risk that you're trying to balance between kind of the AI, to, I'm just, like, trying to understand why AI versus not just doing it the old way, besides it sounds like cost savings and speed? I mean, that. our our uh, full body scan for cancer uh, screening is 22 minutes and priced at $499. You cannot do that without AI. It's impossible. And so, like a typical knee MRI, will take 45 minutes. I uh, have you have, one. yeah, of course. And yep. so um, to do what we are able to do, you need these AIs. Mm -hmm. When you put an AI in production, you need an FDA clearance for it to show that it is safe and effective. It safe was... means it doesn't put people at harm. Effective means it does what is intended to do. So if we're saying our AI is able to enhance these MRI images, uh, improve their quality, in order for radiologists to better see pathology within the images, we need to submit data to the FDA proving that that is true. And so we have a kind of whole team internally that is responsible for running the verification and validation process to submit this data to the FDA and then work with the FDA to answer any questions they might have and so on. It's a very kind of laborious process and and actually I, i'm i'm super impressed with the fda people like they know what they they're doing they have biomedical engineers there they have mri physicists that they contract they really kind of dig in and and look at all of the data they ask really good questions they bring in bring up really interesting points and they've actually in some ways helped us ensure that our product is always kind of um, uh, fully buttoned up Got it. And, and I assume there's then versions, right? Like you kind of lock a version of the AI. It's not like at the time, see, well, we use AI at my company as well for lots of stuff, but our AI actually kind of evolves and changes sometimes over time. But it sounds like with an FDA process here, it's kind of locked in, at least in that, I would think, 
version or release. Correct. Of- it's versioned and we submit a version and we get clearance for the version and then we have new versions. Uh, right. They are working, uh, the FDA is working on some ways to get a kind of more of a blanket clearance for a company for a particular type of device. And mm-hmm. uh, we're part of a working group to to help with that and kind of get a get a, um, uh, a type of, of clearance that then allows us to more readily update models. So let's talk about that a little bit because we had an experience again here at x where we were doing software as a medical device and clinical decision support. And one of the things that we were focused on was kind of continuous learning from single instances, right? That's why we got into it. And I remember some very early discussions with the FDA now. We ended up not pursuing that, but probably must be five years ago now or so. And it was very hard to understand, at least in the conversation, how one might accomplish this idea of kind of the evolving model inside of the regulatory frameworks. Has that conversation now moved forward? Oh, yeah. It's pretty straightforward, actually. It's called They call it PCCP, Post-Change Control Plan. And the the theory is, hey, if you're a company that is pushing models out, you should be vi- v- uh, running VMV on each of your models internally to ensure that they are of high quality. It will give you a clearance that allows you to run those VMV models internally. You don't need to submit them to us every time, but you still need to run them. Mm-hmm. And we'll come to you and audit to make sure that you're running those those VMV models accordingly. And if you are, all is great. If you're not, then, you know, it's a problem. So and so... Like manufacturing process line where you have certain quality thresholds, right? Or certain metrics that if you go out of bounds on... Correct. You know. Yeah. And, and you need to still maintain your QMS and maintain your mm-hmm. design inputs, design outputs, all of the different steps that go into designing and 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 clearing a medical device you still need to do you just don't need to go through the process every time 